In 1945, the defeat of Germany meant the liberation of the millions of victims imprisoned in Nazi concentration camps. However, that did not end the human cruelty, exploitation, and mistreatment witnessed in both the East and the West. Welcome to History Facts. Today, I will tell you what it was like to be a prisoner during the Cold War so you can learn the true story of the millions of defeated people who were imprisoned, enslaved, and tortured by their winning rivals. But enough talking, let's dive into it. Consequences of World War II we all know that World War II left an absurdly high toll of wounded and dead. Yet despite this, many defeated soldiers decided to surrender their weapons rather than give their lives. And that's how they passed into the hands of the enemy. After realizing that Germany was out of the way, Russia tried to take its place in Europe, spreading the ideology of communism to all parts of the continent, and later on to the rest of the planet. For its part, the United States, which had just been a recent victim of the Pearl Harbor attack, turned its anger towards the Japanese living in American territory, leaving them to commit the same misdeeds of which the Nazis were accused. Even if the war had just ended, the battle wounds had barely begun to burn in the people's hearts. The Hell of the Soviet Concentration Camps after the Soviet Union and the United States worked together to achieve victory, their ideological differences caused the two countries to quickly split to plan the downfall of their former allies becoming sworn enemies. This created two significant factions that remained at loggerheads throughout the Cold War and were supported by neighbors who shared the ideological beliefs. On one side, we have the United States, a defender of capitalism and democracy. And on the other side, the Soviet Union, which defended the ideas of communism backed by a violent dictatorship. While the world debated these trivialities, the victorious countries took advantage of the vulnerability of their defeated rivals to crush them physically and mentally. Unfortunately, life in the Soviet Union did not improve with the fall of Germany. Although the Nazis had been defeated, the dictator Stalin, a man willing to use any method necessary to silence and punish those who thought differently, was in a stronger position than ever. And that is what he did until the day he died. According to historians, more than 400 Soviet forced labor camps were found in which prisoners had their skin stuck to their bones due to starvation and mistreatment. The greatest tragedy of these concentration camps is that most of their prisoners had never even fought in the war or wielded a weapon. And the treatment of civilians was as cruel as that of German soldiers who fell into Soviet hands. When prisoners of the Soviet regime died, the bodies were thrown and piled up in mass graves as if they were a pile of excrement. Food was scarce and without variety, driving the victims insane from cold, hunger, and insufficient shelter. Meanwhile, the living were forced to work in the most extreme conditions possible at a temperature of 45 degrees below zero. Although the barracks were overcrowded, the dwellings were made of such precarious materials that the amount of warmth they provided was not sufficient. Only those who were able to survive the poor food and minimal medical care managed to wake up to see the next day. But sooner or later, all succumbed to the hellish workdays under the freezing wind. These Soviet concentration camps were established in the farthest places of the cities to separate the victims from their families. Eventually, this led to the prisoners being forgotten among the snow and the corpses of their comrades. The name given to these concentration camps was Gulag. This acronym spread in the West thanks to the work Gulag Archipelago, written by the Nobel Prize winner for literature, Alexander Stoltzenitsyn. The work denounced the cruel life in the concentration camps that operated between 1930 and 1960, the year in which this tragedy ended. Profiting from Death 
Occasionally, Stalin punished the population with large-scale purges, leading to thousands of dissidents and opponents being tortured and executed for their anti-Soviet behavior. However, Soviet concentration camps not only sought to teach and impose fear, but were also used as one of the main economic forces of the communist regime. For the Soviet Union, prisoners were not even seen as cheap labor. Instead, they were considered free and disposable labor destined to work in deplorable conditions. If one prisoner succumbed, another was ready to take their place. Even the released prisoners had to endure social condemnation because the regime's propaganda had ensured that the victims were seen and treated as outcasts. Soviets versus Germans According to the Soviets, their concentration camps were not intended to put their inmates to death, unlike the Nazi extermination camps. Yet, the fact that the Soviets did not use gas chambers does not mean they had high regard for life. The inhumane living conditions to which their prisoners were subjected led to the Gulag system claiming between one and a half and three million dead. Strangely, the media took it upon themselves to minimize the acts committed by the Soviets, who were clearly as bad as the Nazis. To this day, no one has come out to make a statement on the matter. Maybe it is because no country wants to admit that we had to resort to one mass murderer to defeat another. U.S. Discrimination In 1941, four years before the end of World War II, the Japanese Imperial Navy attacked the U.S. naval base at Pearl Harbor, provoking the entry of Japan into the war. The partition of the United States led to the utter defeat of Germany, Italy, and Japan, who were crushed by the military might of the Allies, and to a negative view of the Japanese community in American society. President Roosevelt ordered the arrest of 120,000 Japanese citizens to prevent alleged acts of espionage. After these measures were taken, a presidential proclamation was issued that also segregated citizens of German or Italian origin from the rest of the native population and established that they could be imprisoned or expelled as enemy foreigners. Even the governor of Idaho, Chase Clark, made controversial statements that the Japanese were not welcome in the United States because they lived and were bred like rats. Thus, the history of the Jewish community in Germany was repeated on American soil. Sadly, the displays of hatred did not end with the imprisonment of the Japanese. The U.S. government also ordered the recall of all Japanese-made products and ordered the cutting down of 3,000 sakura cherry trees donated by the citizens of Tokyo in 1912. The mistreatment to which the Japanese were subjected was not only cruel and unjust, but also went against the 14th Amendment to the Constitution which prohibits discriminatory treatment based on race or national origin and caused a great scandal throughout the country. The American Concentration Camps According to historical records, there were 10 American-Japanese relocation camps where prisoners were moved across the country. Although the detainees received better treatment than Soviet POWs, this does not detract from the fact that the Japanese were held against their freedom. To make matters worse, these prisoners had not even participated in the war. All Japanese-American victims of the Roosevelt administration were stripped of their weapons and forced to sell their belongings, with no way to withdraw their funds from their frozen bank accounts. One of the most famous U.S. concentration camps was Manzanar a wasteland on the eastern slope of the California Sierra. Life at Manzanar was highly harsh due to the extreme climactic conditions characterized by freezing winters and summers where the temperatures could exceed 50 degrees. Most of the population there consisted of women, school children, the elderly, and infants who could barely fend for themselves. These families were forced to live on army steel cots and straw sacks. Despite this, prisoners in U.S. concentration camps were provided electricity, laundry facilities, and rooms for religious worship, but were forced to bathe with the rest of their compatriots. 
Although inmates with professional qualifications could work in the centers, their pay was a tiny fraction of the wages earned by a civilian employed under ordinary conditions. As a result, the advent of these camps also resulted in a precarious labor situation that bordered on slavery. Even if some Japanese could obtain permits to work outside the camp, usually as agricultural labor, many did so under armed guard. A few more fortunate ones had some autonomy, but there was not one person who was free to move about without a card identifying them as a camp prisoner. Nevertheless, the desperation and fear in the Roosevelt camps were absolute. Every soldier was allowed to shoot anyone who tried to escape, increasing tensions between the prisoners and the people guarding them. The most severe case recorded to date was the Manzanar Camp Riot, in which U.S. troops opened fire on the inmates, mercilessly killing 135 people. It was not until 1946 that the last U.S. camp was closed. Although the U.S. concentration camps were closed due to social pressure, the torture, hunger, and desperation of the Soviet camps continued to reign in the world for the next decades. World War II was over, but human misery had only just begun. That's all for now. See you in the next video with another interesting topic.